Okay, so this video is about adding permutations. All right, so the note here is just kind of explaining what this video is all about. And given a set of items, it's possible to form arrangements um, of different groups by ordering one item from the set, any two items from the set, and so forth. So if you want a total arrangements from the multiple groups, you have to add up the results of each case. All right, it, may not, it might not make much sense. Let me explain that. How many words of any letters, any number of letters, can be formed by the word cans, C-A-N-S? All right, so if that's the case, but I'm saying of any number of letters, theoretically, you can have a one-letter word, like the word A or whatever. So theoretically, we can have a one-letter word, or we can have a two-letter word, or we just use two of those letters, Of course, we have a three-letter word or a four-letter word. So this is three letters. All right, so it could be a three-letter word or a four-letter word. So the letters here, we got one, two, three, four letters. So that means of the, the one-letter word, I have four options for it. All right, of the two-letter words, um, I got four times three options. All right, we got four letters for the first um first letter and I got three options for the second letter in that word. For the three letter word I got four times three times two and for the four letter word I got four times three times two times one. Alright so that's actually four different per permutations. This is actually a permutation of four choose one plus a permutation of four choose two plus a permutation of four choose three plus a permutation of four, choose four. So um, so that's what it is. And if that's the case, basically, whatever this stuff all asks you, you got the beast is four plus 12 plus 12 times two, so that's 24 plus 24 again. So it sums up to be 48, 52, 64. What's that 64? Let me check my math though. Yeah, so it's definitely 64 ways. And just for the record, some of you guys may have tried to do this permutation of 4 choose 4. I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but that would have been 4 factorial over 4 subtract 4 factorial, which is 4 factorial over 0 factorial. And I never mentioned what 0 factorial is. Just know. 0 factorial equals a 1. So if you ever see 0 factorial, it's equal to 1. Can't really explain why, just is. All right, moving on. Well, y'all can't explain why. How many ways can you arrange 0 objects? Well, there's only one way you can arrange 0 objects, and it's not arranged anything. Sounds kind of weird, but that's truly why it's 0 factorial is 1. There's only one way you can arrange 0 objects. All right, moving on. It's a new question. How many four-digit positive numbers, less than 4,670, can be formed using the digits 1, 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9, if repetition is not allowed? So just keep that in mind. Repetition is not allowed, so no numbers can come up more than once. All right, so this is another one of those type problems. We want to group them several ways. We want to make a four-digit positive number that is less than 4,000. 670. And I only use these numbers. So I got a four digit number to start with. One, two, three, four. My first number could be one and it'd be less than 4,670. It could be my next number. I got, I got to choose from these numbers. One, three, four, five, eight, nine. It could be three. Could be four. The first digit couldn't be five, eight, or nine. All right, so let's look at each situation. All right, so if one is first, I'll come up with this number. And the first number is automatically the number one. So this is not one times anything. It's automatically the number one. So that's true. I got plenty of options for my next three numbers. It could be anything it wants to be. However, it can be one again. So I got one, two, three, 
four, five, six numbers to choose from, the one is used that leaves me with five options for the next letter, four options for the next, I mean, number, and three options for the next number. All right, so that's if one is first. If this is one of them, and if three is first, the next one. So I got three blanks, one, two, oh, four blanks, one, two, three, four, for the four digit numbers. The number three is automatically first. And if that's true, I still got, I got six numbers, three is used. So still got five options for the next letter, number, four options for the next number, and three options for the next. And then the last case would be a four is first. All right, so let's say four was first. Four bearing first, number four bearing first number. Doesn't give you five options for the next number. Because, well, let's make that look better. All right, so anyway, you don't have five options for the next numbers. So for my next number, it has to be smaller than six, or it might not be smaller than this number here. So my next number has the, um, could be, it couldn't be nine, and it couldn't be eight. But it could be five, four, three, or one, and it still be smaller than four, six, seven, zero. So in that's the case, one, two, three, four. We got four options for my next number. After that number is used, I got two numbers used now. I've used the four, and well, actually, actually I take that back. The four can't be used because four is already used there. So let's try that again. All right. So the first number is a four. And that's already used out of our set of numbers, our one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. I can't use nine, I can't use eight because that would make it bigger than four, six, seven, zero. I can't use four again because four is already used and it already said repetition isn't allowed. So that's true. My only options are one, three, or five for the second digit. So I only have three options for the second digit. So three options there. All right, so um, after I use those two letters, I only have, if I use two of those letters, four is used, and one of these other numbers will be used, one, three, or five. Um, I only have one, two, three, four letters left for my next choice, and three letters left for my last choice. So basically, the answer here should be the sum of all that. All right, so the sum of the first one is 5 times 4 times 3, that's 60. So it's 60 ways here. And then this is 5 times 4. This is 60 again. And then this is 3 times 4 times 3, so that's 12 times 3, so that's 36. That's 120 plus 36, so that's 156 ways. You can create a four-digit number less than 4,670 using those digits. All right, got one last example. All right, how many arrangements of the word active are there if C and E are always together? Let's think about all these letters. It could be an A, we could get C, we could get T, we could get I, we could get B. No matter what, C and E is one block by themselves. So this is one block. This is another block. This is another object. This is another object. This is another object. So I call them blocks. Let's call them objects. All right, so if you think about that, how many objects do we have? If we got one, two, three, four, five objects. Having five objects, we've been doing it for a while. That's five factorial ways. You can rearrange that. However, in this object, it could be C, E. So this says C and E has to be together. They didn't say they didn't say it had to go in order C to E. It could be E C. So because of that, it's two factorial ways of rearranging just that box alone. So it's five factorial times two factorial. Because I could add an E C in all those places. So five factorial, I want to say is 120 times two, which is 240 ways. A rearranging it those letters so that C and E are always together. All right, I thought that was the last example. I got one more. And it's going to come along the lines of items always being together and so forth. So I'm going to erase this now. How many ways can three math books, five chemistry books, and seven 
physics books be arranged on a shelf if the books of each subject must be kept together. All right, it sounds like there's a lot going on. I would always pause for a minute and think about what object we're working with. So one object is the three math books, because they got to be together. Another object is the five chemistry books. They have to be together. And another object is the seven physics books. All right, so just the object alone, it's pretty easy. Those three objects, one, two, three objects, there are three factorial ways of arranging those three objects. You just use lighter color. So it's three factorial ways of arranging those three objects. Then within there, the three math books can be arranged as well. They can come in a different order of three factorial ways. The physics books come in order of seven factorial ways. The chemistry books can come in an order of five factorial ways. So you got the total arrangement of objects times all the arrangements the object can be rearranged in. So that's 3 factorial times 3 factorial times 7 factorial times 5 factorial. And whatever that product is, it's the number of ways they all can be uh, rearranged. That product is 21772800. I think. Yes, that's right. So this number is about 21,772,800 ways. You can rearrange them given that condition. All right, that's all I have. Good luck.